everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing a new art journal page that I made a while back. It took me a while to get this video uploaded but now it's finally here. And I'm using my large dilutions journal and mostly a mix of acrylic paints and stencils. Unfortunately I didn't realize that my camera had stopped filming so the beginning of this page is missing. What I have done is just mixing some Claudine Helmuth acrylic paint with some white gesso to get a light blue color. Then I used this flower stencil from Prima and added some blue paint to my spread. And the red ink that you can see in the background here on my page is from cleaning some stencils a long time ago. So my page already had all of that when I started. And I dried the paint with my heat gun before I continued with the page. And I wanted the spread to have a little bit more of color so I went in with some distress stain and just colored the most of the page. I'm mostly focusing on the edges since I still want part of the pattern in the center to be visible. And then I'm drying the page again before I continue. And when the page was somewhat dry, I brought out this stencil, which is also from Prima, and some color wash spray inks from Ranger. And I wanted to make a bit of a gradient, so I'm using a green, yellow, and a blue color here. And I'm just spraying through the stencil, not being too careful where I get the ink. And if you want to make sure that you don't spray over the edge of the stencil, you could easily mask the edges off with a scrap piece of paper or just a tape or something. But I didn't really care about that, since I will add even more layers on top later. And I'm also flipping the stencil over and pressing the leftover ink onto my page before I use a paper towel to get some of the ink off. I do think that the spray ink ended up being a little bit too dark, but I can still work with it. And I do want my page to be pretty light and have a lot of white color. So in order to lighten it up again, I am using some white gesso from Ranger and I am mixing it with water to make it more fluid. The Ranger gesso is pretty thick and ends up being very opaque and I wanted my white to be a little bit of transparent. And I'm using an old card here to mix my gesso. You could easily use a palette knife or an old key card or something as well. And when the gesso is the right consistency, I am using my card to add the paint to my page. And since the color wash spray ink wasn't completely dry, I did get some color on my gesso and it turned green instead of white. But this is just an art journal and it doesn't really matter. And the fun part about art journaling is that you sometimes get unexpected results and often those turn out to be the best part of the finished page. And when I'm happy with the amount of white, I am dripping the rest of the paint onto my page to get some white splatter all over. And then to add even more, I'm using my white dilution spray ink to add some more white around the edges. The thing about this ink is that it will sort of blend into any porous surface. And since most of my background is a porous surface, the white ink will blend with the colors in the background. And that will give it a bit of a ghosting effect. You will see later in this video that I have added some more of this ink and that it will be opaque and sort of stay on top of my acrylic paint, which is a non-porous surface. And now it's time to create some focal points and I have this piece of scrap paper in which I have die cut a few different circles. And I'm using the same blue acrylic paint that I used in the beginning and I'm just adding this to the stencil to get some circles. Unfortunately the page still wasn't completely dry and I ended up mixing the color in the background with my blue paint and got a greenish circle instead of the blue that I wanted. But I'm going to add some more ink to the circles once it has dried to get it back to blue. And then I'm just doing the same thing on the other side as well, but here I am using a dark red color instead. I'm also pressing the stencil onto my page a few times to get the leftover paint on there, which I think added a nice touch. I didn't really like the way the red circles ended up looking, so I'm trying here to add some more to make it look better. But I just ended up being even more disappointed, so after drying the paint with my heat gun, I went in with some white paint to try and make something of the circles that I would like. Which didn't go very well either, and I just made a complete mess of everything instead. So the best thing to do in a situation like this is to add even more white. So I went in with my gesso and just covered up the red circles that I didn't like. And to make things more even, I added some gesso to the blue side as well. And then I had to salvage the large red circle that I messed up and I went back with the red paint again. Unfortunately, the paint ended up looking more bright red than it did before since I now had white underneath. And I did really like the dark red color, but now it's just the way it is and I'll just have to deal with it. After a few layers of color though I got it pretty dark and decided to just leave it like that. 
After the page was dry again I used a white marker to draw around the edges. This time I made sure that the page was in fact dry since the pen will just be completely destroyed if I try to draw on wet acrylic paint. After the white pen I'm doing the same thing with a black marker to add some black lines around the circles. And then it's time for some journaling and I'm still using my black marker to write a few things on my page. I'm not trying to write nicely or even readable and I'm just quickly scribbling onto the page to get some text on there. And the text isn't really there for someone to read and it's just for decorative purpose. And I'm writing both large and small text and when I'm happy with the amount of text I'm adding some hearts and circles and other small doodles around the page. I also used the white pen again to draw around all of the doodling I did. And I did have some trouble with my white pen here for some reason, the ink just didn't want to come out as it should. And since I don't want the text to be as visible as it is now, I'm using this stencil from the crafters workshop and the white gesso again. And I'm adding some white ink onto the page to cover up some of the words. I don't want the white to be completely opaque, which I realized it was when I first started adding the paint. So I added some water to the paint just like before to thin it out. Unfortunately I managed to get it a bit too runny and it started seeping in behind the stencil as well. So a lot of my stenciling just ended up being a mess. So I went back in the end and used the gesso from the jar to get a better result. And after I was done with the stencil I sprayed the page with my white dilution ink again. And here you can see what I meant with the ink being opaque on top of the large red circle which is a non-porous surface. And now I'm kind of feeling that the page is done but I do want some detail around the edges. And I used this black marker to draw a black frame around the whole page. I also added a few dots and circles on the frame which I in retrospect shouldn't have done because I don't like it. But now they're there and it's okay. So that was my art journal page for today. It is probably a bit more products and more work than I usually tend to do. But I like to use my art journal for experimenting and just trying new techniques and new styles. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget that you can find the complete supply list in the description bar below and also on my blog. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. 